Hello Roblox, um, I'm Zuxa G and this is a video of my Hackwick project. I don't really have a title of the project, but uh, I guess you can call it Next Generation Voxel Lighting. So, as most of you know, we use a voxel-based lighting system for Roblox since about two years ago. Um, it's based on 4x4x4 four by four by four voxels. And um, there's also a bunch of settings in the lighting service that allows you to control the way that lighting influences your world. Um, so the good part of the system is um, it is fast, it runs on low-end hardware, including mobile, allows you to do a lot of cool stuff like, you know, point lights with shadows, spotlights, etc. So the problem is, um, ultimately, it's limited in fidelity, both because the voxels are big and because the voxels don't have nearly enough data to represent the lighting accurately. So I took a stab at basically doing a rewrite from scratch, uh, and I will show you what I have. Um, so one of the essential components of um, this lighting revamp is HDR, kind of similar to what I did last year. Uh, this means that every single value in the computations is not limited to 0 to 1 range. Uh, could be like 10, could be 100, etc. So let me demonstrate by increasing the brightness here. Um, as you see, the uh, screen kind of adapts uh, to the overall brightness of the image similar to a digital camera or I guess a non-digital camera. Um, and probably won't mean much to <laughs> uh, most of the people uh, listening to this, but the lighting is gamma correct now. This means that it plays by the rules the real world plays by, less like the previous lighting. Okay, um, but the biggest, most significant improvement is this. Instead of the 4x4x4 four by four by four voxels, we now have one by one by one voxels. So if you have a part that's one stud thick, it now can cast a shadow. So why is it really hard? Um, the problem with voxels is once you go from four to one, uh, you increase everything 64x, uh, like the volume, uh, the number of voxels increases 64x. Currently, uh, we have the lighting updates budgeted in a way that you update at most 65,000 of them per frame. Uh, 64 times that is roughly 4 million. 4 mil million voxels per frame is a lot. So to reach that, I had to basically re-implement the entire system to run completely on the GPU. Uh, the code that we had on the CPU was pretty well optimized. I knew I could not get 64x that. So this runs completely on the GPU. Um, the voxels are one by one by one. Uh, in the current demo, I'm updating eight million voxels per frame, not four. Uh, it will become obvious why a bit later. So uh, the basic component, of course, is shadows. Um, you can see that there are dynamic shadows coming from this part. Um, Currently, I'm using the same soft shadow algorithm that we use right now. However, I implemented another one that results in shadows that are hard. Let's enable that and see how it looks. So this way, the shadows are a bit better defined, a bit sharper. Of course, you can run the simulation, see this thing update in real time. So that's all cool. Um, let's open the demo level that I had. Um, so this is same technology. Uh, this is the difference between the soft shadows and kind of hard, harder shadows um, on a slightly more complicated scene. Now, um, of course, um, I implemented all light types. So I have a surface light here attached to this face. Let's enable this, see what happens. Um, unlike the current system, uh, surface lights get shadow support. So if I enable shadows, you see cool effects happening. Um, so this is all pretty much what you would expect, but there is way, way more resolution here because the system is based on voxels that are one stud um, in all dimensions. I think I have a light here inside. Oh, cool. Let's enable that as well. Um, 
So there's a spotlight. You can change the angle. Cool. So uh, now let's look at how the system works on a bigger level. So I have a version of Crossroads here that is destructible. And we will play with that a bit. Uh, so let's just go in. So let's talk a bit more about the 64x problem. Um, so one of the problem uh, with increasing the uh, with decreasing the voxel size is the amount of computations that you have to do. So the way I solve this is by switching to GPU. The other problem is memory. Uh, increasing the storage for the lighting uh, 64 times is not to be taken lightly. The additional problem is uh, I want to store way more data for each voxel. For example, uh, you will notice in the Crossroads v demo that uh, the lights uh, have specular uh, and a bit better diffused response on the parts. So I have to store more data per voxel to achieve that. So the way I solve this problem is by using cascades. Oh, let me first switch to the um, hard shadows mode. So this is how shadows look with one by one voxels with the new uh, algorithm. So I can't really increase the memory store 64x. So the way I solve this problem um, is instead of having just one voxel grid I have several nested voxel grids and each um, voxel grid is um, twice as big as the previous one. So it covers twice as much area. Uh, the number of voxels in each grid is the same, but the voxel size increases. So I have a grid with 1x1x1 one by one by one voxels, and then there's a grid with 2x2x2, 4x4x4. By two by two, four by four by four. Uh, this, in this demo I have up to 8x8x8, eight by eight by eight, but you can have way more than that. So this means that the lighting range can be greatly expanded. In this demo the lighting range is twice the usual, but uh, I played with like four times the usual, etc. It's um, pretty good. This means that far away you can still see shadows and lights, uh, albeit at a, a smaller resolution. So to show you how this works, so if you look close at the shadows cast by that building, I will move further away from this. See on the far corner here, you can see that the lighting resolution switches. So if you move further, right. Um, you can also see that the shadow gets fainter. So one of the problems I discovered, which is interesting, is I made the one by one by one voxels work and I was feeling pretty good about myself. But then I noticed this trampling here. So this trampling is thinner than a voxel and as you can see it doesn't really cast shadows or are the shadows kind of thin. So I thought about what to do about this and I changed the representation uh, of the voxels a bit uh, so that instead of a volume uh, it tracks kind of directional occupancy as in how much stuff is there in this voxel when looking from a specific direction. So let's enable this. So as you can see it pretty much solves the problem uh, of this trampoline shadow and you can see here that enabling this actually fills some missing pieces from shadows. And you will notice now that as I move away from the structure uh, the difference when I'm switching from one voxel grid to another is less dramatic, like the contours get a bit fuzzier, but the overall color uh, or intensity of shadow is the same. Okay, so let's blow up stuff. I have a rocket launcher here, it shoots a rocket uh, and there's a light in the rocket attached to the rocket that has shadows on, it has a pretty big radius. So you can see, you can see the specular highlights, uh, you can see the shadows that are cast by this. It's pretty good. Uh, let me go here, this is super fun. Okay, let me try to topple this. Uh, all right, and so as usual, everything is completely dynamic. Um, you see a lot of shadow definition up close. You see things that <clears throat> uh, you have never seen before. 
All right. Um, let me go inside some of the buildings here. This is pretty cool. You can see that the spinning part, whatever this is, is casting shadows. So I mentioned previously that I'm updating 8 million voxels per frame. So uh, every voxel grid that I have is 4 million voxels in size. And I update up to 2 every frame, always the closest one and um, one of the feather ones. So that shadows uh, and lighting close to you are always real time, completely synced with parts. And everything beyond that can lag a bit. And obviously all of this is tunable based on the capabilities uh, of the hardware that you have. Uh, notice a bit of bloom here. Let me actually change the lighting configuration here a bit. Cool. This is less, uh, less ambient light, more dramatic shadows. You can see that shadows really add a lot to the scene and you can also see on the spillers uh, the impact of having directional information in the voxels so that the lighting is more three-dimensional, sort of less flat. This is cool. All right. So this is the bulk of the demo, but uh, I was working on one other thing that I wanted to show. It's not complete uh, in the way that uh, I didn't really have a lot of time to polish this, but it still works pretty well. So let's switch to the other demo for this. So in this level, my ambient level is zero. The problem with that is, of course, the inside of this building is really, really dark. Uh, oh, I forgot to show you one other thing. Oh, man, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, one of the other problems with this level is that the shadows here, let me switch to the non-soft mode. So the shadows here are very grayscale. And this is not usually the shadows that you would see in real life with the sky that's like bright blue like this. You want to see the shadows that are blue. So I have a special mode that computes the ambient based on the sky. Uh, and let's do this. So this is a bit better. You can see that the shadow ha shadows have a very noticeable blue tint. And it's not just blue because, I don't know, there's like a hard-coded blue number somewhere. Uh, it's blue because the sun is, oh, the sky is blue. So let's have a few cool skyboxes here. Here's one with sunset. Um, it's not, it's kind of not very saturated, so you see that shadows have a bit of a red tint, but not too red. I have a skybox that I kind of combined from two skyboxes, so you can see that this part is sunset, this part is <laughs> from the usual sky. Uh, if you look carefully, you'll see that this side of the building is a bit bluish, and these sides are a bit reddish, so the ambient is directional. All right, um, so now the final part of the demo. So the ambient level in this place is zero. Uh, this is why the inside of this building is completely dark. Of course, I could, you know, do this. Um, but this is not really what happens in real life. So in real life, there's a lot of light bounce going on. Uh, there's light from the sky that hits this floor and then it bounces inside this building and then bounces off the walls, etc, etc. So this is called uh, usually uh, global illumination, or like the way that it's implemented, it's usually called global illumination. So I have a version of global illumination running here. So let me show you how it works. Uh, so when I enable this, uh, this is probably a bit too much. When I enable this, uh, there's a simulation that's going on that says, oh, hey, there's like a light, uh, or in this case, um, sun plus sky hitting this floor, so it should reflect on uh, the ceiling. To prove you that it's actually doing what I said it's doing, let me take this base plate and let me change it to be red. 
reddish. So now uh, you can see that the lighting impact on the ceiling is also a bit red, which is kind of like uh, what would happen in real life. Another example of this, if I enable the spotlight, uh, and let me change the base weight back to the usual color, and let me take the spotlight and increase intensity a bit. So you see there is a bit of red on this wall to the right here, which once again is happening because there is a red light that shines on this wall and this light reflects onto this wall. So as you can see it's kind of rough, um, requires a bit more polish, but the good news is it's completely real time. For example, so let me remove this wall. Oh my god, wow, this is awesome. Um, you see that when I remove the wall or when I move it, uh, let me try to move this, you don't see the um, red spot here anymore. So it's all completely dynamic based on where your parts are, based on where the lights are, etc, etc, etc. And uh, as a final fun thing, so the voxels are one by one by one. Interestingly, this is almost enough to do pretty good looking player shadows. So I have, uh, let me enable the surface light here. Cool. Um, and let me kill the sunlight a bit. Okay, so I have a special mode here that instead of using the usual shadows that we have for humanoids, it renders humanoids into the voxel grid and uh, uses that to do shadows. So the fun thing about this is it makes humanoids compatible with the... Uh, uh -huh. So it makes humanoids sort of compatible with the shadows uh, from the light objects. As you can see it's not quite enough resolution, it doesn't work quite as well as I hoped it would, but hey, maybe with 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5 voxels or something like this, this can actually be the solution for player shadows so that we don't even have two different ones for humanoids and for parts. Alright, so now I think this is it. Uh, I think I'm not missing anything else. So this is my demo. And thank you for watching. Let me know what you think and like my tweet if you like this video and retweet my tweet if you think this is cool and should be part of Roblox. Thank you.